Welcome back to more math with Ms. V. Today we are looking at biased and unbiased sampling. So in the last video, we learned how to determine the population and sample of a surveyed group. And in this video, we will learn how to determine if the group surveyed provides biased or unbiased results. We are still in standard 7 MAE32. And generalizations about populations from a sample are valid only if the sample is representative of that population. So our two words for this video, biased and unbiased. When you get biased results, the results are invalid or not good results because they do not represent the whole population but favor one portion above another. Unbiased results are results that are valid or good because they represent the whole population. For example, if I wanted to know what sport students at a school liked best, and I only surveyed the eighth grade boys, that would be biased. It's leaving out all the girls and it's leaving out the other two grade levels, sixth and seventh in a traditional middle school. So let's look a little more into biased and unbiased. So we have two types of unbiased or valid surveys. The first is called simple random sample. And in a simple random sample, each person in the population has an equal chance of being randomly chosen. For example, if I were to put a bunch of names on a spinner and then spin it, that would be a simple random sample. Everyone in the population, it has a section on the spinner and each se section is the same size. So they all have an equal chance of being chosen. Our other type of valid survey that gives us unbiased results is a systematic random sample. Again, like the first one, each person in the population has an equal chance of being chosen but the difference is through a system. So for example, if I wanted to complete a survey at a football team and I wanted to know who the people are representing, a systematic random sample would be going to the ticket counter and asking every fourth person in line what team they're there to see. I'm not controlling where people get in line, so everyone has a chance of being chosen but I do have a system for how I'm selecting the people I survey. Now for biased or invalid surveys. The first is convenience sample. And this is when the sample group was easy and close at hand to the surveyor. So for example, if I only survey my family members, that's a convenient sample. It is probably not representative of every different type of view in the whole of the population. The other type is a voluntary response sample. This is the survey is sent out or presented to the population and people respond if they want to. So for example, if I own a magazine company and I want to come have a survey completed to know what season people like best, and I ask people to fill it out and mail it back, that's voluntary response. People only will fill it out if they want to and send it back if they're interested. They do not have to complete or send back the survey. So let's look at a few examples. We're going to tell what type of sampling was used. So our first example says, all the names of a class are put into a hat and one is picked out. So this, we can see all the names of the class. So the whole population is the class and they're all represented. They're put into a hat and one is selected. So everyone has an equal chance. So this is a simple random sample. Okay, I'm not controlling which name is picked. Everyone got to put their name in the hat and they each have a chance to be chosen. Okay, our next type of example, uh, example, 
Jose surveys his baseball teammates about their favorite sport. Okay, so this is convenience. Jose just surveyed his teammates, so people he's around all the time about their favorite sport. Okay, he didn't do any work. He didn't try to get different results or different opinions. He just asked the baseball team. And chances are, if they're playing baseball, their favorite sport is baseball. Not always, but it's a pretty good estimation. Okay, our next two examples. A radio station asked people to call in and share their thoughts on a new mall opening in the area. So what type of sampling would this be? Well, you don't have to call in. You're asked to call in, but you're not required to. They can't make you call in. So this is what we call voluntary response. You can answer if you want to. You can answer or you cannot answer if you don't want to. Um, one thing with voluntary response is you'll probably only get people that feel very strongly. Yes, they're excited, they can't wait for the mall to come, or they uh, hate the idea of the mall, they want it to go away, they don't think it should have happened. Voluntary response tends to get your two extremes, the very excited people and the very um, against people. Okay, last example. Allie went to a store and asked every 10th person coming out of the store what their favorite soda was. Okay, so any person in the stores could be chosen. It's random. Um, but because she can't control, but rather than just walking up to people, she's asking every 10th. When we ask every 10th person, this shows we have a system in mind. So this is a systematic random sample. Thank you for joining Math with Miss B. I look forward to seeing you in another video.